Hello, welcome to Sonograph Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about abnormal fetal growth. This is the fifth video in this video series with title of Fetal Microsomia Part 1. The outline of this presentation include the definition of fetal microsomia, prevalence, significance of fetal microsomia, a specific prenatal and postnatal risk in mother, fetus, neonatal and childhood period, risk factors for development of fetal microsomia, diagnosis, the explanation of adjunctive techniques in diagnosis, and final teaching points. At first, definition. The term macrosomia is defined as a large neonate with a birth weight above a defined value such as 4,000 to 4,500 grams independent of gestational age. The term large for gestational age is used to describe a neonate with birth weight above the 90th percentile for gestational age. The fetuses of diabetic mothers have a higher rate of prenatal complications, including shoulder dystocia for the same birth weight. As a result, some advocate defining macrosomia in diabetic mothers greater than 4,000 grams, whereas they may define macrosomia in non-diabetic mothers as greater than 4,500 grams. A grading system has been suggested also, means grade 1 for infants between 4000 to 4500 grams, grade 2 between 4500 and 5000 grams, and grade 3 for over 5000 grams. This system may be useful at term for decision making regarding operative delivery. Now, the prevalence of fetal macrosomia. The birth prevalence of infants more than 4000 g is approximately 9% worldwide and approximately 0.1% for fetuses more than 5000 g with wide variation among countries. The significance of pregnancy with fetal macrosomia. The risk of adverse outcome increases along a continuum based on the degree of macrosomia between 4000 to 4500 grams. At more than 5000 grams, the risk of stillbirth and neonatal death increases. For this reason, the presence of macrosomia is an important factor to consider and decision making during birth. For example, whether to use forceps or vacuum versus whether to proceed to caesarean delivery. What is the specific prenatal and postnatal risk in mother, fetus, neonatal, and childhood period? Maternal risks include protracted or arrested labor, assisted vaginal births, caesarean delivery, genital tract laceration including vaginal, anal, sphincter, and rectal lacerations, postpartum hemorrhage, and finally uterine rupture. The risks in fetus include shoulder dystocia leading to birth trauma, asphyxia, stillbirth, especially in fetuses more than 5,000 grams. The risk in neonatal period include hypoglycemia, respiratory problems, polycythemia, minor congenital anomalies, increased frequency of admission and prolonged admission greater than three days to a neonatal intensive care unit. The risk in childhood and beyond it include obesity, impaired glucose tolerance, metabolic syndrome, cardiac remodeling that is increased in aorta intima media thickness and left ventricular mass. What is the risk factors for development of fetal macrosomia? The first one in maternal diabetes, obesity, excessive weight gain during pregnancy, previous macrosomic infant, advanced maternal age, having a male child, genetics, and overdue pregnancy. How we can diagnose fetal macrosomia? 
two-dimensional ultrasound examination is the standard modality used for diagnosis of fetal macrosomia and large for gestational age. The complete explanation of fetal biometry were presented in fetal biometry course. Macrosomia is best identified by an ultrasound scan at the gestational age when a decision regarding the clinical management has to be made. Performing a single estimate at 24 to 34 weeks of gestation has very poor predictive value for birth weight at term. Estimated fetal weight at this time can significantly underestimate birth weight probably because of accelerated fetal growth in the later part of the third trimester. There are minimal data on the ability of ultrasound to identify fetuses more than 5,000 grams. Abdominal circumference is the most important parameter for assessment of risk of macrosomia means an AC of 35 to 38 cm alone is predictive of macrosomia. An AC more than 90th percentile or 2 to 3 weeks ahead of gestational age may be an early marker for development of macrosomia despite normal estimated fetal weight. Assessment of an enlarged AC on ultrasound should prompt fetal re-evaluation in 3 to 4 weeks especially in patients with diabetes. Prediction for absence or presence of macrosomia can generally be made after two successive scans that show an increased AC. If the AC remains under 90th percentile, then performing more ultrasound examination does not increase predictive value. The rate of growth of the AC over time starting around 21 to 22 weeks has also been shown to be helpful in predicting macrosomia. What are adjunctive techniques in diagnosis of fetal macrosomia? These techniques include soft tissue measurements, fetal volume measurement, neural network and artificial intelligence, HCAC ratio, Doppler velocimetry, and fetal MRI. The first one is soft tissue measurements. Ultrasound measurement of subcutaneous fat may improve assessment of normal versus accelerated growth. Subcutaneous fat has been measured at the mid humerus, shoulder, abdominal wall, thigh, and peribuccal area. Combination of soft tissue measurements or other parameters like umbilical cord cross section, amniotic fluid volume with estimated fetal weight may be more useful for predicting macrosomia than any method alone. Fetal volume measurement. Fetal volume measurement by 2D or 3D ultrasound has been investigated in some researchers and not very reliable results have been obtained. Neural Network and Artificial Intelligence A neural network is a computerized model of biologic neural system that can be trained by establishing connections between basic data that input include by parietal diameter, occipital frontal diameter, abdominal circumference, femoral length, gestational age, and fetal position, and results or output is estimated fetal weight and constantly rectifying the relations. It's still investigational but appear to be promising in this and other automated calculations. Although this has been attempted specifically in cases of diabetes, it has not been proven to offer better fetal assessment. HCAC ratio. The HCAC ratio is of no proven value in predicting macrosomia since the constitutionally large fetus maintains a normal HCAC ratio. Doppler velocimetry. Doppler velocimetry of the umbilical artery in fetuses suspected of being LGA does not have prognostic value in contrast to fetuses with growth restriction. And finally, fetal MRI. In 
theory, MRI should be a superior technique for evaluation of macrosomia because it evaluates adipose tissue better than ultrasound. Barriers to routine clinical use of MRI for estimated fetal weight at this time include cost, availability, and discomfort for some patients. Also, an improvement in pregnancy outcome needs to be established before adopting a new approach to fetal weight assessment. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Although sonographically estimated fetal weights are somewhat imprecise, using the estimated fetal weight is still the best way to predict macrosomia and LGA and better than physical examination or maternal estimates of fetal size. This holds true despite the fact that estimated fetal weights are less precise in diabetic mothers than non-diabetic mothers and less accurate in large fetuses than in those who are average size. The AC is the most important parameter for assessment of risk of macrosomia that is, an AC of 35 to 38 cm alone is predictive of macrosomia. In addition to estimated fetal weight and fetal weight percentile, a number of other criteria have been proposed to predict LGA fetuses and macrosomia. However, none of these proposed criteria has both a higher sensitivity and higher positive predictive value than the estimated fetal weight. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.